In order to understand how cortex works, neurobiologists have really started to use a lot of optical techniques. They allow you to directly observe a lot of neurons at once and even manipulate them. The problem with this is that optics can't reach conventionally very deeply into the brain because the light gets scattered. So you really only see the first couple layers of cortex usually. One way to do that before would be to use brain slices. Right? For decades, people have taken a slice out of the brain and then you can see that all six layers of cortex in a great field of view. The problem is there's no context, right? There are no sensory inputs, there's no modulation, there's no vasculature. In short, the rest of the animal just isn't there. So what we're trying to do is bring back that context, right? So by having these prisms that we insert directly into the brain, we get that slice-like field of view, but in an intact, awake, behaving animal. The prism is attached to a cover glass that is anchored to the skull. The prism itself extends really into the full thickness of cortex and acts as a sort of mini periscope, turning the field of view from the horizontal plane to the vertical plane. Excitation light from a conventional two-photon microscope then reflects off the metal-coated hypotenuse, turning what was a horizontal image within a cortical layer to a vertical image that spans the full thickness of cortex, all the layers. Because light only has to travel now through a couple hundred microns of tissue, it doesn't scatter nearly as much. So we're able to get high resolution, high contrast images all through the thickness of cortex. So changing the focus of the microscope now moves the field of view laterally across the cortex rather than deeper into cortex, as demonstrated by this stack of images taken of layer 5 cortical neurons expressing yellow fluorescent protein. Now we've been able to keep these prisms in the animal's head for over two months. So here, for example, is an image of those layer five neurons taken after the prism has been in the brain for 68 days. We were encouraged that the neurons seem to remain intact for several months following prism insertion. And so we next wanted to ask, are the functional properties of these neurons also remaining intact? And so we went at this by recording the visual properties of neurons in the upper layers of cortex using a standard two photon imaging approach uh, through a standard cranial window. We imaged the neurons and their visual properties before the prism insertion, and then after the prism was inserted, we went back and imaged these same neurons day after day. And what we found, surprisingly, was that even though there was a severing of many of the connections to these neurons, the functional properties of these neurons were remarkably intact. And this data was backed up by other experiments using electrophysiology and histology as well. So these experiments gave us a green light to go beyond anatomical imaging towards functional imaging through the prism where we could image all six layers simultaneously. And we did this by recording the visual response properties of neurons across all layers of cortex to presentations of visual stimuli at different locations and in different orientations while the mouse was awake and running on a ball. We extended previous findings of a salt and pepper organization of these neurons to the deepest layers of cortex. We also demonstrated that not only did the microprism facilitate the imaging of deep cell bodies in cortex, but it also allowed us to image the activity of long-range axonal boutons in deeper layers of cortex, and these are boutons coming from neurons in very distant regions of cortex. One advantage of the prism approach, in addition to being able to record from deep cortical layers, is that you can record from all six cortical layers simultaneously. So if you use a high-speed two-photon microscope, you can essentially watch the activity of neurons in different layers and look at their correlation over time. In this example, we were able to monitor the activity of neurons in all six cortical layers at the same time in an awake mouse uh, that was either running or stationary in complete darkness. We hope that as calcium and voltage sensitive indicators continue to improve, that one day we might be able to monitor the flow of action potentials through a cortical column in real time in an awake behaving animal. In summary, we describe a method that allows us to monitor entire cortical columns in awake mice over months, and in the future, this method can likely be adapted to allow us to image entire cortical columns in mammals that have even thicker cortices, such as rats, carnivores, and primates. This technique can be used on any conventional multi-photon microscope, and the prisms themselves only cost about $50. So future integration with other optical approaches like optogenetics we think is going to be really exciting uh, and we just think this has a great future and is really going to make a big impact in neuroscience.